What's up interwebs, it's Ollie from Flight Comp, and I'm going to show you guys a old school uh, slope glider kit that I bought off RC Groups. It's a Dragonfly, and it's made by, or was made by DCU from Westminster, California, which is like North Orange County in Southern California. And let's look at the specs. 30 inches long, 50 inch wingspan. Um, back in the day, a 50 inch wingspan, um, two channel uh, slope glider was a really common class. I think there was a couple of uh, sort of the bigger name manufacturers making uh, 50 inch kits. Um, it says weight here, uh, 12 to 14 ounces without radio. So, doesn't say what it is ready to fly, but it's still pretty light. It wasn't a heavy, um, like, uh, PSS or power slope scale kind of uh, slope glider. Does have an epoxy fuse, foam core wing that needs to be sheeted with balsa. Balsa tails, some ply parts, and some hardware. And there's a description, a light, fast aerobatic slope ship that builds quickly and will be the most fun you will ever have with a two-channel radio. I don't know about that. That's a pretty big, big claim. I did have uh, two of these when I was a kid, and they were really nice. They were really aerobatic and nice to fly. And uh, I look forward to uh, putting this thing together and uh, maybe reliving some of my past. So let's have a look inside. Let's see what one of these old kits looks like. I built tons of kits like this back in the day. So here we go. I think the guy that uh, sold me this probably put the bubble wrap in, so let's take this out. I have some plans, and here's the fuselage. Man, I remember thinking back in the day when I was a kid that getting a fiberglass fuselage was like the coolest thing ever with a with a kit. Uh, usually, I'd be building a, a wood fuse out of balsa and ply, but this is a fiberglass fuselage. You can see there's no surface coating on it at all. It's just raw epoxy and glass. Absolutely no reinforcements in it. No carbon, no Kevlar, anything like that. And it's not the lightest thing in the world. It's pretty heavy. And it's probably not the strongest thing in the world either. But, you know, that's okay. That's what we had back in the day. Um, it's going to take a lot of primer and sanding to fill all the pinholes that are definitely going to be in this fuselage. Here's the canopy. Uh, this is basically a top mounted wing. Um, and then it has like uh, this long canopy that goes over the top of the wing. Like this. So it kind of makes it look like a mid mounted uh, wing, but it's basically top mount wing. Put that aside. We get some plans here. Let me unroll these and then I'll get back to you. Okay. So we have a um, balsa wood vertical stabilizer, which is not a solid um, plank. It's actually built up with a few different pieces. And then we have the elevator here, which is just a solid plank. And then we have the fuselage layout right here, showing servos, receiver, battery. And this was approved by Cheryl, so thank you, Cheryl. And uh, let's see what else we have. We have more fuselage drawings here. Make sure you get that rudder at zero degrees. Sort of a wing sheeting diagram. And then we have the wing. And here's my hand. You can see the wing's not that big, and that's full size, so not a big model. And then, uh, I think an option was to put tiplets on it, and um, I think both the models that I built when I was a kid, I did put the tiplets on it. So we'll probably do that too. So there's the plans. Um, I plan to build this very standard. I'm not going to really mod it at all. I, I might um, use some better horns and better push rod for the elevator. We're definitely going to be using some much smaller servos and radio gear. You know, it'll have 2.4, uh, probably JR radio gear. So maybe we can save some weight. Although I don't really think we need to save weight in a plane like this. 
So there's the plans. Let's see what else we have. Okay, we have an instruction sheet, and the first page is list of contents. Bunch of wood, the wing cores, uh, parts for the tail, miscellaneous things you need. Hinges, monocoat, or some type of covering, paint for the fuselage, various glues, and your radio gear. And I don't think there's any uh, pictures in this instruction manual. It's just uh, photocopied and typed out. And we are going to start with building the wings. So that was the wing, and then we're going to the fuselage assembly here. And look how much text there is, you know? That's, you know, really back in the day, you know, manufacturers really went out of their way to type up some good instructions. So that seems to be the last piece or page of the instructions. And there's a, a dihedral plan in conjunction with instructions on page two. So this thing has a little bit of dihedral. It shows a half inch on one tip. I don't know what that is, but it can't be more than one or two degrees. And I think that's it for the instructions. Now let's see. Basically the heart of the airplane here. Some cores. Man, I have not sheeted a set of white foam cores like this since I was probably, I don't know, 17 years old. I have built several built-up models in the last 10 years, but nothing with a foam core wing like this. So this is the top bed, and this is the actual core. There's what the airfoil looks like, you know. I don't know if they tell you what the airfoil is, but there's one core. Basically, there's two cores and then the beds. And you use the beds to aid with sheeting the, um, or putting the balsa wood sheeting on the wing. You can do that with weights or with a vacuum bag. Uh, I remember all these planes I did with, I would just put the balsa sheeting on, put a piece of like plywood over the top, and just set like old paint cans up here just for weight. That's how I did it when I was a kid, but I think since I have a vacuum bagging system now, we'll just bag those, perhaps, or I don't know, we'll see. And let's see, we have a bag here, torque rods for the ailerons, a little bit of hardware, some glass cloth to join the wings, that's the horizontal, there's the elevator, <clears throat> and there's probably... I don't remember, but they could pre-cut the parts for you for the rudder, so maybe they do or not. I don't know, but something in there for the rudder. And then we have, you know, this would be leading edge and trailing edge stock, uh, or sub-trailing edge stock. And then this is your trailing edge, you know, just uh, trailing edge stock that you have to do a lot of sanding and shaping on, and some balsa wood sheeting. There's just four sheets of sheeting, so I guess that's enough to do the whole wing. And I can tell you right now, this definitely isn't contest-grade balsa wood. It feels really hard. But again, we're not looking to build the lightest uh, model in the world with this. So the first thing to do is to start doing the wing sheeting, and I think we're going to basically glue all these sheets together and then trace out... Uh, the wings and cut four pieces out and then I think you move straight into um, putting those on the cores so let's just uh, get into it man I'm kind of excited about this so uh, I'll start doing some stuff and then when I finish some stuff I'll get back to you I just noticed this uh, price tag on the kit I guess this must be the original price tag it's um, 1992 so I think that's uh, what March 22nd, 1992, and uh, it says 5496. So not as cheap as I remembered, but um, I don't know what that would be with inflation. This might be like a $200 or $150 kit now if someone was making it. But uh, it's kind of cool that the old tag is on there still. So 1992 or what? We're um, what is that? Almost 30 years? Um, 27 years or something like that? When this kit was purchased, probably from uh, a hobby store, you know, somebody actually walked into a hobby store and 
moseyed on down the uh, RC glider aisle because there definitely were RC glider aisles in hobby stores and there was a, a power plane aisle and a rocket aisle and all kinds of aisles and uh, picked this thing out and took it home just like I did when I was a kid okay that was kind of cool so let's get into building it so the first thing I've done is uh, I've glued the uh, sheeting together and let me tell you they weren't straight so I had to do a lot of sanding and cutting to be able to um, glue the four sheets together and then I've just simply put the cores on and marked where I need to cut to get my four pieces of wing sheeting and I've given myself about a quarter inch margin all the way around each piece and it worked out pretty good there turns out there's uh, plenty of wood here to um, get the sheeting cut out so I'm going to cut these out and then um, I'm going to do a little bit of sanding on the cores I found a problem with one of the cores which is pretty lame um, when they hot wired it they put a big divot I don't know if you can see this but this is like an eighth inch raised up or a divot I'm not really sure and then on the other side it's rolled over so if I sand this smooth what's gonna happen is my trailing edge is gonna get shrunk down a lot so I don't really know what to do I think I'm just gonna sand it lightly and hope that when I put the balsa on it sort of uh, fixes it or covers it up a little bit. Not much I can do. Just try to work with it, work around it. But anyway, I'm going to um, cut this out and then probably sand these lightly, sand the cores lightly, and then get into actually uh, bonding them to the cores. So the sheeting is prepped. Uh, I sanded it a little bit. I sanded the cores. We have our pieces, both sides of the wing, basically ready to glue on to the cores. I'm going to use uh, the Z epoxy, just because I have it and it's easy to mix, but you could use any kind of slow curing epoxy. Wouldn't recommend using anything under like an hour cure. This will be overnight. It's pretty thin. I'm going to thicken this up with some micro balloons very slightly. Uh, just to try to stop it from soaking into the wood too much, and then I'm just going to... Um, Pour it on the balsa and spread it out with a squeegee or something similar. And then I'm going to set these up in the beds and put a piece of wood. I decided to build it old school, so I'm just going to put a piece of wood on top and some weights. And not use the vacuum bag. And the other reason, too, is because this is really soft uh, white foam. And I'm concerned that my um, bag will crush it. Because I can't really adjust the uh, amount of pressure I'm pulling. Or a vacuum that I'm pulling. Um, so yeah, I'm basically just going to get this going. I'm going to get these uh, sheets glued up. And I'm going to get all this under uh, some weight. And then uh, let that cure overnight. And we can uh, move on to whatever's next. Which is probably the tails of the fuselage or something. Alright. Got the sheeting on. As you can see... Um, under all this weight, we have the beds and the sheeting, and then I have a piece of uh, wood. Then I got a couple of really heavy Corian molds I made for an F3J plane a long time ago. Some weight and some other junk stacked up in the middle. I think we got good compression going on the uh, cores. Hopefully the sheeting is... Gonna bond nicely to the cores. There's the root. And then there's the tip there. Let's see what that looks like. So we'll just let this dry overnight and then we can trim up the uh, balsa and maybe uh, start putting on leading edges and sub trailing edges and things like that. Well, I managed to get the sheeting on. Um, it came out pretty good. Just about as good as I remember this process going. I've given the sheeting a light sanding. I'll do more uh, later. And then I've trimmed up the trailing and leading edges of excess sheeting and block sanded those with some uh, sandpaper. And I've also trimmed up and sanded the uh, wing roots. You know, the cores had a few little dings and stuff here and there. But once you get the leading edges on and get the wings glued together, uh, you won't notice any of that stuff. But yeah, came out pretty good. Um, so those are ready. The next thing I got to do is they give you some balsa uh, sub trailing edge stock 
which gets glued on like that. And then a basswood or hardwood, um, this is just a square stock, and then this is a uh, triangle stock, so that gets glued on to the leading edge like that. I'm just going to use um, wood glue for that. I'm going to cure for uh, maybe overnight or at least four or five hours. So yeah, um, I'm going to get the sub trailing edge on, the leading edges on. And then I've also managed to do some work on the rudder, and I'll show you that right now. So here is my rudder. Really basic built-up structure. I just put some uh, parchment paper over the plans and uh, cut out the pieces. This is half inch by eighth inch balsa, and this was a kind of a pre-cut piece. I actually had to trim it up a little bit to make it match the plans. And then uh, just T-pins to hold it down, and I use wood glue to... Um, Put it all together. So I'm actually going to let that dry for another couple hours and I can take it off the um, board and sand it to shape. And I think that'll um, basically wrap up part one. Um, so I'm going to go put those leading edges and sub trailing edges on. And uh, thanks for watching and look out for uh, part two. Um, this thing's going pretty quick, so we don't, I don't know what. <clears throat> we'll get done in part two, but probably a lot. So hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in the next one.